Okay, so because we might be able to finish today, I'm going to go ahead and do this. Oh yeah, so then tonight we'll do uh, chapter 6 notes. So here's, fric or here's uh, gravity. Uh, friction is also this way. Normal force is that way. And we got to crack this into its two component vectors there. So the question is, what happens, right? That's what they're asking. What happens? Well, <clears throat> we know that if you're pushing, like, if you're pushing this way, this part up, so whatever, F A Y is equal to 12 newtons times the sine. What is that? 30 degrees? Yeah. Okay, so that's six newtons is putting is pointing up. So that right there is six newtons points up, and then this is one kilogram. So that is uh, gravity, right? That's 10 newtons pointing down. Um, so then the question is, what can, um, what can friction do? Because if you just put it up against the wall, it's going to, like, if this was a frictionless wall, would that block stay in place? No. Does that make sense to everyone? <coughs> Am I recording? Yes. So if this was a frictionless wall, that block would slide down. So now the question is, what is the force of friction, right? And then the force of friction we know to be mu F sub n. Well, in this diagram, does it make sense to you that F sub n is equal to F A x, right? And so F sub n is equal to 12 newtons times the cosine of 30. And that's so 12 times 0.866, what do you get? Wait, why is it F, wait, where's F A? F A, whatever, F A is the thing, the force. Yeah, I'm using X as the horizontal, Y as the vertical. What do you get? What do you get? 12 times 0.866 gives you what? Yeah, it should be big. It should be like 10. 10.4? Yeah. Okay, 10.4 newtons. So friction can cover 10 newtons, right? So what happens here is if I just, I don't know what, let's say for example, I don't know, maybe this is like, this is gonna be weird, but maybe there's a little motor or something, a little propeller, and it pushes that way with 12 newtons, yeah? What's that? Oh, oh yeah, okay, so wait, have it? Oh, okay. So you uh, you were giving us friction, the friction value. So friction, the force of friction is mu, mu is 0.5. So the force of friction will cover 5.5.2 newtons. Okay, but anyways, anyways, my point being, back to this. So friction will friction will cover 5.2 newtons. Does everybody make? Does that make sense? Okay, jumped a little ahead of myself, but we got on track. 5.2 newtons here. If this force pushing up, I don't know, it's a rocket engine or something, it's, psh, it's holding it up against the wall, trying to. If there's no friction, this slides down, which means like this initial drawing was wrong. Friction should go that way, right? And then since friction can go up to is uh, whatever up to 5.2 newtons, the 5.2 and the six is 11.2, which is greater than this, so it will stay. Why would it move up? Friction's a reaction force. F their force of friction isn't actually 5.2. It's going to be 4 newtons. Yeah. The max of friction is 5.2. So you're telling me that friction makes it move up? Right? If you pull the emergency brake on your car, your car doesn't go backwards. Right? Do you get what I'm saying? Because remember, what type of force is friction? A reaction force. Okay, which means it only gives what it needs. So in this case, we know friction is a supplying exactly four newtons. And that's gonna keep this stable. Wait, how do we know that it's going 10 newtons is down? Gravity. Gravity? Oh. Yeah, Fernando? Oh yeah. Oh wait, sorry, sorry. I actually hate it. I hate it when people do that. 
Uh, well, actually, oh, you know what we could do? Let's do this. Let's say we're not sure what's going to happen, right? So I'm going to say M A. Okay. So then I'm going to say, bless you. Then I'm going to say um, F A Y uh, plus F sub F um, minus F sub G is F. Oh, good God! What is that? Equals M A. Um, we're just guessing. We're guessing. So. Yeah, it's like you 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 have to do like that sort of base check to figure it out, to figure out which way friction's going. That's that's why I did this compared to gravity. I did this comparison right away because I wanted to make sure that I knew what was going on. So then that leads me to to put friction up. But if I do this right, shh, please. If I do this, what's my answer going to be? Is it going to be zero? No, because I'm calculating this as max. So my answer is going to be negative, which means it's, it's going to go up. Because if I'm saying it was going to go down before. Like my answer is going to tell me that this thing is going to go in the direction of friction. And if that's true, well, okay, see, sorry. If this comes out as a positive answer, that means I'm saying that this is accelerating up. Right? But then it should, it should that's where my mind should catch it and say, wait a minute, friction can't, act it can only react so if friction is the thing that's making the difference then it can only rise up to the level necessary so you'll get some positive acceleration when you sit and think about it you say wait a minute that means it's accelerating up because friction is making it accelerate up that doesn't work friction isn't acting it's reacting so therefore this so then i'd say okay if i get rid of this and just put four newtons instead of 5.2 then everything becomes zero yeah. Yeah. Oh, that that was yeah, it was supposed to be an M. Cause it's like I went like this. So and then this was this was too small, it looked like an A. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry? Okay, any other questions? So this, shh, listen up please. This is one of those, this is a problem that's actually good for you guys because it is not one that's like from regular physics where you can just plug in the equations and get the answer. It doesn't work like that. You have to think. So you have to sit back and ask yourself what's going on at every stage. This isn't one where you can just use the, some of the forces, do some algebra and get your answer. Right? This is one where you have to say, okay, what's happening? What is the nature of these forces? What is this thing going to do in the beginning? So this is, this is <clears throat> the kind of problem that all of the other stuff were the tools to prepare you for this. So you, you have to just seriously think about this for a while. And, and, and go through every step and say, okay, what happened? What happened? And you'll notice I didn't give some, <clears throat> some exact series of steps. What I did was, first I looked at the situation. And I realized they're asking, does it go up? Does it go down? Does it stay here? Well, then I should think in my head, okay, what's going up? What's going down? What, what does that tell me? Up is the, the vertical component. Down is gravity. Well, those two tell me that if there was no friction, this would slide straight down. And then I have to say, okay, well, now I need to know the magnitude of the friction without finishing everything else. So I went over here and I calculated the magnitude of the friction at 5.2. Please remember, this is a max value. Yes, friction is reactive. It is a, this, is a not, this is not the value of friction. It is a possible value. Okay, so then I said, oh, well, as long as 10 and 6... 
if that difference is greater than this, greater than friction, then this thing's going to slide down. But if the 10 is less than or equal to this plus friction, then the box will stay there. In no way can the box move up unless FA goes up. Do you see what I mean? Oh, good question here. Think about this with your partner, whoever it is right now. Tell me how big does FA have to be to start pushing this box up the wall? Oh. Figure that out. I'll give you like one minute. How big does FA need to be to get the ball to stuck? To get the box to slide up the wall. <laughs> All right, so here we go, come back together. Come back together so we can work on this together. So basically, it works like this. Oh, well, does anybody, anybody feel like giving it a shot? Yeah, yeah. All right, Jonathan, go for it. Wait, what? Well, obviously that. It's greater, oh, greater than 50.2. Uh -huh. <laughs> so FA, so if FA is 15.3, will it work? Yes. No, anyone else? <laughs> Yeah. I, I don't have the answer, but I think I know how you answer. Okay, go ahead. Listen, please, listen. First you find F net, and then F net equals um, the agency force times sine 30 degrees minus mg. Okay. And you set the friction equal to F net. Okay, did you see what you did, what you forgot? 5.2 is the vertical component caused by FF, right? So in order for this box to move upward, the net force up in the vertical direction has to be like whatever, zero, or at least greater than or equal to zero, yes? Which means the vertical component of this has to be 15.2, or whatever, yeah, 15.2, to overcome gravity and this friction. That's not FA, that's the vertical component of FA. Do you get what I'm saying? So since this is 30, we know that this, that this force has to be like 30.4. Yeah, because that means this is 10 going down. Friction going down is 5.2, right? That means going up, we need 15.2, right? Mm -hmm. But this is a 30, 60, 90 triangle. And if this is 15.2, oh. then this is 30.4. Oh, 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 okay. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. So all you did was you forgot to, forgot to make the angle. Okay. Does everybody get that? Good. All right. Start on the last problem. What's the last problem? <laughs>